This is an important project for the centre because it's designed to address one of our key challenges in Australia, which is about securing our future water supplies. Australia is a drying continent with a growing population and we won't have sufficient water supplies for the future. Water recycling and specifically water recycling for drinking could be a significant contribution to meeting our future water supplies. But there are some concerns around water recycling for drinking and this project is designed to understand what those concerns might be and develop communication tools and engagement strategies that will help overcome the concerns of the community for water recycling for drinking. The project is about providing a set of tools for the community. Firstly, to understand the issues in water recycling. Secondly, about the, the benefits, the potential costs, uh, the risks associated with it, the way that they can be handled. And it's developing these products on the basis of solid evidence. And an important component of that is firstly that it's seen to be independent and secondly that it's seen to be relevant. So there are two bodies that help provide that. I chair the Project Advisory Committee, which is the, the, a group of people who have expertise in communication, in social science, in physical sciences, and in engineering, to comment on the uh, evidence that is being provided and on the research tasks that are generating that evidence. And the second group is the Industrial Reference Group, and their, their main role is to provide advice on the relevance of the particular products and processes that are being employed. I think it's important to have sort of a one-stop shop where information is available on what is going on across the world. So we have put together some of the more iconic reuse schemes around the world that have been running for some of them over 35 years to others that are more recent. And so water utilities can go to this uh, website, for example, and have a look and see where portable reuse is occurring. They can have a look at what the requirements are, so the general scheme requirements, or what we have termed as critical infrastructure, that if uh, a utility wants to open a reuse scheme in their location, they can have a look and say, okay, these are the factors that we need to consider. So we're looking at the history of the scheme, when was the scheme started, the drivers that led to portable reuse, how long the scheme has been operational, what advanced treatment processes it uses, the operational criteria that they require to make sure that the scheme is up to par, their permit guidelines and regulations. We have also collected water quality data for these schemes, so including the parameters that they test, the range of parameters that they look at, how often they test for these parameters, and if there's any other adverse health effects. So we looked at this, if there's any epidemiological studies that they have performed to gauge if the population is having any public health issues. We've collected engagement strategies that this scheme has looked at, has used over the past years and are also ongoing to make sure that their community is well informed about portable reuse. So if they have tours, to engage the community so that they are aware of what portable reuse um, is and how it is affecting their population. We're responsible for providing evidence that the water recycling treatment process is as safe as the commonly used water treatment processes around the world today. We're doing that by demonstrating that the probability of an event or a consequence or an incident, a failure occurring, is extremely low and is at an acceptable level of risk. And we're doing that with what we call resilience modeling, which is a technique which has been, um, been used for many years in the highly regulated um, environment that is the oil and gas industry. So we've modelled a what we call the reference plant and we've done that by basing it on designs from plants from around the world. It includes the equipment obviously within the process. We also then gather real industry data and this is the crucial element of the modelling from around the world. That's associated with each piece of equipment that we have in our model. When we actually run the model key element of it is Monte Carlo simulation. That's what determines the probability of, of a failure occurring. And that works by generating a number of random events over thousands of system life cycles. So a life cycle represents a lifetime of a plant. And we'll also be doing a number of, of what we call scenarios or what if scenarios 
where we, for instance, what happens if we change the spares management strategy um, on a particular piece of a critical equipment that we've identified, what effect does that have so you can use it to generally improve the design of um, plants in the future. So the project we're working on is looking at governance, decision making and pricing related impediments to potable recycling. Governance is really about exercising your decision making responsibilities under a piece of legislation. And where water recycling is concerned, legislation is really important in two different ways. First of all, you've got situations where the legislation is not yet clearly defined. Uh, where potable recycling is concerned, because this is novel infrastructure uh, in the location and so the legislation hasn't been framed with uh, the idea of a potable recycling scheme coming online. In our experience to be successful with this, it's really important to have all of the legislation clearly defined and mapped uh, early in in your consideration of potable recycling. And if there's an uncertainty where legislation is concerned, that you actually go out and start engaging with the responsible agency uh, and try and work out, okay, well, what can be done about this? What, how do we interpret this? And can we get clarity around what's involved? And, and that's really what's happened to a large extent over in Western Australia, where they've actually got a groundwater replenishment project that is the next agreed source alternative. They've tested it, they've piloted it, they've proven it up. But critically, they actually had all the decision makers involved in, in the process. As part of the project, a wiki has actually been developed and on the wiki there are three interactive timelines that people can go on to and have a look at. Um, these interactive timelines give you a chance to actually point at different points of time and see what was happening in three, these three jurisdictions and, and start to understand how the process was undertaken, what the, what the decision steps were and the like. And I guess build a case for thinking about these issues in the longer term. The purpose of this middle stage, this is what we call the stream two, is to really articulate a set of strategies for the use of those educational materials in a range of settings. So we have research on the governance regulation dynamics, we have our research on the, on the public values associated with, with, with potable reuse, and we have our work looking at the, the, the sort of the development of uh, communication and public engagement strategies. So the purpose of the work is to underpin the development of communication strategies and the use of those tools with a kind of evidence base that, that articulates how and when and what combination those tools might be best used. And really also to, I guess, to articulate or to, to open up the kind of goals of a long-term community engagement uh, strategy. So what we did is we, we had focus groups which were drawn from around Australia and we used a whole range of what we call selection criteria to shape the composition of those groups. So they were typically groups of around 10 people and they were drawn using a, a mixture of demographic and attitudinal sort of variables. So we wanted to have a relatively representative cross-section of the community. Well, I think what this focus groups is telling us is that we need to rethink the way in which we've thought about community engagement in this space. In this whole area, it's, it, we've naturally, I guess, tended to focus on public communications which focus primarily on the safety of technology. And we've, we've, that's been the kind of the, the, the primary way in which we've addressed issues around public trust and legitimacy in this area. What our focus groups are telling us is that, although that's a valuable area of communications, we need to think about the long-term strategy here. We need to think, well, if there's a set of concerns around the need for potable reuse and the sustainability and cost of these infrastructure kind of developments, this is also connected to a whole range of concerns around uh, you know, regulation and governance and trust and some concerns around, around possible safety and, 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 and risk concerns. What that, what, that, what that means for us is that we think that there's an opportunity to build a conversation with the members of the public around the, the long-term needs for water security in Australia in which a range of options including potable reuse are on the table uh, as options. We found that context had quite a significant impact on whether projects were successful or not. The other thing um, that we identified is the importance of having a, an adequate visitor centre so that people, that people can go there, they can be walked through the whole process and they can be educated about the process of recycling water and they can become familiar with it. And uh, a number of our communications experts that we spoke to really stressed the importance that it's never over, that 
you know, this, not this idea that you just implement a, pro a project program of communication and it's over and that's fine, it's ongoing. The strong themes that came out of this research is that um, although we've been able to identify factors that are critical for success of these projects, there's no, there's no one magical, one size fits all. So there's always going to be every strategy and communication program is going to have to be tailored to fit into, into that particular community. Stream 3 is really the education E of the National Demonstration Education and Engagement Program, or the ND. There are really four major education products. We have a global connection map that's really exciting because it, it, it connects places that are doing uh, water reuse from all over the world. Each site, the stories are broke up into four different, really, sub-stories. Some focus on needs, some of the stories focus on benefits, some of the stories focus on the fundamentals, how the treatment actually occurs at those uh, sites. Dissolved air flotation is a partial barrier against turbidity. And some of them focus on a lessons of how people enjoy drinking the water and, and celebrating the product water that these plants are producing that create a sustainable source of supply in these areas. Great bouquet. That's a 2014? I actually have some water inside and I think this water is better. It's great. At the bottom of the Global Connections map, we're going to have another technique that we call expert videos and we're going to be able to have experts from around the world, particularly with an emphasis on, on experts in Australia, that will be able to approach a number of those nagging questions that people might have in their minds about water's use and reuse. Going population is one thing. Um, climate variability is another. So from 2001 through 2009, we went through the Millennium Drought. Then we've had extreme rainfall. But we will go through drought again. We have uh, six think and drink short animations that are designed to be flexible and adaptable and to be used in a multiplicity of ways. They're very short, two minute animations. And if you're attempting to provide for a modern city that's growing and in a drought, then that supposedly infinite resource suddenly feels very finite. If we can't always rely on our rivers and dams for drinking water, what do we do to keep our cities thriving? We need a range of reliable, realistic and effective options to secure a supply that's fit for our local conditions. And thinking about it, the biggest volume of extra water nearby is the water we just used. Wastewater. Let's rethink and retreat wastewater so that it isn't all wasted after all. We have a video that's called the Water Cycle Explorer that really gives a new picture and a new perspective of the water cycle. And within all of that, we have some really interesting science animations, illustrated science animations that take difficult concepts and make them very understandable to a lay audience. All of our education products are designed to be flexible and adaptable. They are designed to be used in community meetings, on websites. They can be used in, in visitor centers if, if there's a visitor center in, in, in the area. They, they can be used in social media. Um, and, and this will be at the discretion of the utility so that they will use what fits their unique um, circumstances. People will want to use this information but for all different reasons and one of the key things that we know when people are embarking on or wanting to know about water recycling or bringing water recycling cycling into their community is that they're at different stages of that process. So we developed a slider. The slider will help a utility or a municipality to decide on what products are going to be best to use for their community. So if you're only just beginning to think about recycling or something that you might need to consider in the next five to ten years, the slider will take you back to the beginning and it will list all the products and how you might use those to help bring your community along with you. And if you're about to turn on the tap, for example, there's still a lot of information that you will need to make sure you keep your community coming along board and um, it will tell you what are the best products and what reports you might like to refer to in, in all of the products that we've developed. 
while this project will make a, a very important contribution to our knowledge around communication and engagement for water recycling for drinking, it is only one step in the journey that Australia and overseas countries are taking. This project will lead to a range of tools and knowledge that will be used in Australia as well as overseas and importantly it should sponsor and support a range of uh, positive engagements with other countries around water recycling for drinking, communication and engagement. And our vision for this project is that it will have value to Australia but it will also be picked up and used in other parts around the world and that as it's picked up and used elsewhere, the learnings from that application will come back to Australia to assist Australians as they approach or take on the journey for water recycling.